So in this video, I'm gonna go through Microsoft 365 E5. So we've talked a lot about what Microsoft Suites are. We've talked about what is included in E3, F3, F1, but we've not really talked about the additional benefits of E5. And E5 is a whole another ball game with a lot of different aspects. And these aspects come in the form of security, compliance, calling and meetings, and finally analytics. So I wanna go through all four building blocks high level and then go into the next segment of this presentation so if we look at microsoft 365 e5 security there's a lot of products that are included here and uh, in the first column you already see all the products and that's basically the microsoft 365 e5 security suite you have defender for endpoint secure your local endpoints endpoint devices that you are you have defender for office 365 which is a suite of products to help you secure your office 365 environment so anything within Teams or anything within Exchange Online. You have Entra ID Plan 2 step up on top of Plan 1, which adds uh, yeah, more of an automation layer to your identity management. You have Defender for Identities, secure your specific identities. Defender for Cloud Apps, which should help against shadow IT. And then some other benefits are listed here. What you also see here is how this compares to the different Office 365, EMS, and Windows E5 suites. So these products are also included in their own building blocks, so to say, which we talked about earlier. So Defender for Office 365 is part of Office 365 E5. Defender for Endpoint Plan 2 is part of Windows E5. Entra ID Plan 2, Defender for Identity, and Defender for Cloud Apps are part of EMS E5. The Compliance Suite, in an early video, I already said it. It's a massive suite of products, way too many to, to list out, call out what, what exactly their functionality is. But it's important to understand what your options are here. So Microsoft 365 E5 obviously contains all the compliance suite of products. Microsoft also sells this as a standalone suite of Microsoft 365 E5 compliance, which basically holds all the functionality. But there's also some sub suites of these. So Microsoft thought they might be easier to instead of selling these standalone, to sell them as a subsuite of the compliance suite. So you have the information protection and governance suite, which basically contains everything around information protection. So you have Defender for Cloud App functionality in here. You have Teams Data Loss Prevention. You have App Governance, Endpoint DOP, Customer Key, things that basically will help you in your information protection for your entire M365 environment. Then you have the insider risk management part of it, which, as it says, is around insider risk management. So if you want to make sure that the data that you have within your organization is, is not being handled in wrongful ways. For instance, somebody all of a sudden after getting notice that he will no longer be employed by your company, starts offloading all kinds of data to an external device. These types of services will potentially help you with that. And finally, e-discovery and audit is to help you do uh, yeah, your di discovery and audit within your organization. Also here, these come available in different suites of M365. So many of these are available when you buy Office 365 E5 standalone. And some of these are available in EMS E5. Now what's important to note for Microsoft 365 security and compliance is that these are almost always considered tenant-wide services. So Microsoft requires you to assign these services on a per user basis. But as soon as you turn that on into um, your environment, um, it's on for all your users. So it's a tenant-wide service. So if you buy one license of one of these products and you start using it, you're using it actually for all your users in your environment. So right off the bat, immediately, when you turn it on after buying one license, you should buy licenses for any user within your environment. Is there anything you can do about this? Well, that's on a case-by-case -case basis. So if you go to this link, aka.ms slash compliance SD, and you check the info for any of the products that are listed there. I've taken the example here from Microsoft Defender for Identity. You will always see one of the questions below here. How can the service be applied only to users in the tenant who are licensed for the service? If there is something listed there that doesn't say that it's only able 
to be licensed on a tenant-wide basis, then you can scope that to the amount, the amount of users that you want to scope it to. However, Microsoft always states to do this for all your users in your environment, because as they say, single point of failure is all so if you only do that for a subset of your users, the other users are still vulnerable and you still want to make sure that those are covered as well. Those are covered.